Hey everyone, welcome to the Royce Reports. I'm your host Royce, and on this channel we talk mostly Xbox related stuff, but today we're going to be talking about CES. CES was an event that is shared amongst a lot of other companies about sharing electronics and stuff, and PlayStation was present and they announced quite a few interesting things like a brand new controller and a brand new car is coming your way, but the most important thing is they just announced that PlayStation 5 has sold officially over 30 million units. Now, that is great. No matter where you're looking at, no matter what side of the fence you might be on, 30 million units is huge. Freaking huge! That is great for them. That is great news for PlayStation. That is great news for gaming. But what about Xbox? Well, we have some unofficial numbers that we can compare it to, but... How does Xbox close that gap within the next year in order to continue to stay in the race here? Well, let's talk about it. So like I said, PlayStation 5 has just surpassed 30 million units, which is great. This is a great sign, not for just PlayStation, but for gaming in general, this is showing that gaming is not slowing down and that PlayStation, despite, you know, looking weak to all these people like the FTC and the EU and the CMA about how they can't withstand Xbox buying e ABK because they're going to crash and burn. Obviously not. But this is not about that. This is about the comparison between these two juggernauts, Xbox and PlayStation. So, what do they have to say about selling 30 million units of the PlayStation 5? PlayStation 5 passes 30 million units sold. PlayStation's Jim Ryan announced on stage that the PlayStation 5 has passed 30 million units sold. Ryan also stated that the PlayStation 5 shortage is essentially over, saying everyone who wants a PlayStation 5 should have a much easier time finding one at retailers globally, starting from this point forward. The last official update we had on PlayStation 5 sales numbers was back in November when Sony revealed the console had passed 25 million units sold. Those are huge numbers. That is fantastic. And you're probably sitting here wondering, well, what's Xbox doing? Well, Xbox doesn't like to share that stuff. It likes to just grab it real tight, bring it in real close and whisper and say, don't worry, baby. It's going to be all right. But is it going to be all right? Let's look at the numbers. These are from VG Charts. Now, VG Charts is the most accurate place you can get these numbers. And obviously because Xbox doesn't share these, you don't really have a good idea of what they're doing, but they are actually pretty accurate when it comes down to this. And back in December, they talked about how the PlayStation 5 sales topped 28 million units. And uh, shortly after that, we heard that PlayStation officially has launched with 30 million units. So PlayStation 5 sales top 28 million, Xbox series tops 20 million, Worldwide hardware estimates for November 27th, December 3rd sales. The Nintendo Switch was the best-selling console with 932,599 units sold for the week ending December 3rd, 2022. According to VGC Charts estimates, the Switch has now sold an estimated 118.2 million units lifetime. Holy cow. Well, good thing we don't care about that, right? All right, moving on. <laughs> the PlayStation 5 sold an estimated 698,791 units to bring its lifetime sales to 28.26 million units. The Xbox Series X and S sold 591.167 units to bring their lifetime sales to 20.26 million units. So this was about a month ago and they are kind of right on the money right there. So we could assume that Xbox Series X and S are around that 21 million, 22 million range based off of this right here. So there's about a 10 million to 9 million gap currently between the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series consoles. Now, this is actually pretty impressive on Xbox's part. And the reason why I say that is because Xbox, as we all know, and I love Xbox, don't get me wrong, look at this. Look, I'm wearing the, I'm wearing the shirt here, all right? And don't call me a hater, okay? I am a guy who cares about this product as much as you guys clicking on this. But we got to understand and we got to be realistic here and we got to realize that Xbox has not had that big of a presence within the first two years of it being a console. 
And that is kind of embarrassing, but also pretty impressive that it sold 20 million units despite not having that that one big banger that everyone's looking forward to. They have yet to have a game that is the showstopper, the thing that turns the industry on its head and has everybody looking forward to, like how PlayStation has. PlayStation launched with Spider-Man Miles Morales, it launched with Sackboy, and it launched with Demon's Souls. So you actually had something to utilize your PlayStation with, whereas Xbox really didn't have anything on launch, just the backwards compatible games that they had. Now, I know a lot of people start to say and nitpick that, hey, Demon's Souls is a remaster. No one really cares about Sackboy, but they also had Ratchet and Clank come out. They also had Horizon Forbidden West come out, and they also had God of War Ragnarok come out. And yeah, some of those games were cross-platform, but at the same time, these are still games that everybody was looking at when they came out. Shows that exclusives are actually important to the console. And we have had exclusives on Xbox. I'm not gonna say that it's been barren because 2021 was actually pretty good. You had a great 2021. You had things like Age of Empires launch, you had Psychonauts 2, you had Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5 all launch. And Forza Horizon 5 is my game of the year for 2021. But we got to acknowledge the fact that no one is going out and buying an Xbox for Forza. No one is going and buying a PlayStation for GT7. Those are just additions that are very good to your ecosystem. But what people should be buying the consoles for is for Halo. And what happened to Halo? Well, we all know what happened to Halo. It ended up just killing over and dying. <laughs> and uh, we, we had to say our, our, our farewells to that because we don't really know what's going on with Halo moving forward. And it's kind of, it has kind of come back with it actually delivering content, but it might be too little too late. Now, Again, I just want to reiterate the fact that this is very impressive for a console that hasn't really had big heavy hitters to reach the 20 million milestone. Uh, and the success of that, I think, is really in part due to Game Pass. Game Pass is the system seller, I think. this You have access to so many games and so many great, great franchises. And whenever you buy an Xbox Series X or S, you immediately get access to over 400 games and they're all pretty pretty good they're pretty some there's some pretty good games in game pass there's a huge gap though there's 10 million units that are missing between the playstation 5 and the xbox series x so what do they need to do in order to catch up because honestly we look at xbox and it's the whole package right it has the power it has the features you have things like auto HDR, you think you have things like FPS boost, the backwards compatibility program that they have that they've built over the years is really great. And it, it even adds all of those FPS boosts and auto HDR and 4K resolution boosts to those games as well. You also get things like quick resume, but you also have a game pass machine just by itself. It's just literally you can just buy it and use it for game pass. So they have a lot going for it. But what are they missing? They're in fact missing the most important part out of this equation. You could have all of those things, but where does your loyalty come from? Where does people coming to the platform come from? And that comes from a strong lineup of games, a strong exclusives that people are buying the console for. Seriously, system sellers, that's what you need. And we do have something like that on the horizon, right? We do have this next six month window and it is looking very good from my perspective but from the general audience perspective how many of those games do they actually care about we are getting minecraft legends we are getting forza motorsport and redfall but the one that actually people really care about is starfield starfield is really the only thing anyone actually cares about but the thing about starfield is is I, if you've watched me, you know that I'm kind of wary when it comes to Starfield. I'm still on the fence about Starfield, but I do think that Bethesda, if they try, they can really knock it out of the park. But the thing is, is that I'm not the only one not sold on this. This is honestly not 
Elder Scrolls. This is honestly not Fallout, right? And that's the system sellers. Those are the games that people have been asking for for years. We have been begging and pleading for a Fallout New Vegas 2. These are things that the fans have been wanting. These are things that people have been begging for. And I know that this is where Bethesda wanted to go. They wanted to do Starfield and the time was now. But we really have to wait and see about Starfield. And that's really sad. And I think that we also don't know what's happening on the second half of this year. And that's kind of scary. There's rumors that Hellblade might be coming later in 2023. And there's rumors that Avowed might make it into that holiday window. But those are just rumors. We don't have any concrete evidence. So we don't really know when we will get that evidence. Because we are still waiting for this rumored showcase to happen to explain what's happening in the next six months. And E3, if I hope they drop the, uh, the whole this is coming within the year type showcase because I think that really hinders your platform and doesn't get people excited enough about buying into the system. But we don't really know what's happening second half. And I can really, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be anything too crazy, but they really do need to have a God of War. They really do need to have a Last of Us or a Ghost of Tsushima. And I know that those are reasons why you play PlayStation and those are those third person narratives that people on Xbox say they don't really want, but honestly, it's not about what you as an Xbox player wants. You as a person who's been ingrained in the Xbox ecosystem for years and years and years. I know I have been an Xbox fan ever since the original Xbox and I know distinctly what makes Xbox Xbox and what makes PlayStation PlayStation, right? And we all know that PlayStation does those story games, those, those movie-esque games very well. In fact, the best in the business when it comes down to that. And we know that when it comes to Xbox, it's the bro shooter console, the RPG machine. And that is great. That is a great thing. But it's not about that. It's about bringing more people to your system. And that's what Xbox needs to focus on. They don't need to focus on pleasing just the fans. They need to focus on pleasing people who are on the other box and try to get them to come over. And how do you do that? By investing in those titles that they like on those consoles. If they like those things, how do you get their attention? You get it by doing the same exact thing. You mimic them and not beat for beat, but by having your own take on the franchise. And I know that Hellblade might be that, but at the same time, Hellblade isn't as popular as PlayStation's IP. They need that next big thing and they're kind of missing that. They're lacking that. Some of the things I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about is those adventure games, those family adventure games like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank. Uh, those games do move consoles. You want to be able to have a game that your family is on a play. You want to have a game that will drive console sales for kids because kids are a huge market and we need a mascot for Xbox. We don't have that anymore. Like other than Halo, other than Master Chief, John, John Halo over here, <laughs> other than John Halo, we don't really have a person that you can slap on the front of a box and be like, there you go. That is what people identify with Xbox, ship it. Other than Forza and you just slap a random Forza car on there, uh, there isn't that person. And again, I'm going, I'm comparing it to PlayStation, but PlayStation has those people that cover their box whenever they go and sell the PlayStation. And Xbox really needs that. They need a mascot. And so they need to focus on having those characters. And you need to have something that is associated with family members. They already have the IP. Once they acquire Activision Blizzard, they're gonna even bring more like Skylanders, Spyro and Crash to the system. But you already have something that's really important there, which is Banjo and Kazooie. And I always thought that if you can make a Banjo Kazooie game similar to what Pixar does with their movies in that same vein, I think you will have a huge cash cow on hand 
and actually give these characters voices. And I know that everyone likes the <laughs> type conversations that they have in that world, but we can have a reboot. You can have both. You can have a remake of the original Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, and then you could have a brand new restructuring of what it means to have Banjo Kazooie to a modern audience and allow them to take inspiration from something like Ratchet and Clank and like those Disney movies because that would be absolutely phenomenal. I would love to see that and I would love to see them to focus on bringing new mascots in and bringing new characters and, and fun stories to be told because honestly, yeah, we have Doom and, and you have Halo and you have Gears and you have all of those stories which are fantastic don't get me wrong they're amazing i love all of them it's just that those some of those franchises aren't associated with xbox yet because they haven't owned bethesda long enough to have that brand association and when abk goes through because they're probably going to continue to keep most of their ip on all platforms they're also still not going to have that association with the xbox brand especially since crash and spyro are still associated with sony to this day so there's a lot of strives that need to be made on xbox's front in order to close that 10 million gap and i think they can do it i think it's very possible for them to do it it's just that we need we can't have another year like 2022 with no major exclusive can't have a, another year like 2022 where there is this is what's coming within the next year. And the first six months of that statement is null and void because nothing actually came. And then the last six months of that statement still don't have an update on any of those things. We can't have a year in 2022 where there is no Xbox presence and where anyone could run away with rumors like Fable being canceled or rebooted and Xbox not coming out and saying anything. And people are actually believing this because of the state of these studios in the first place. You can't have another year where your biggest IP that is associated with your brand is lackluster and does not have the support that is necessary to, for your most important brand. You cannot have another year like that. And it, it blows my mind. I'm really more impressed about the fact that they have sold 20 million units, 21 if you wanna, honestly, it's probably 21, 22 million units, but without any heavy hitters that is impressive and that is the only reason because of the only reason that is is because of game pass what else was at cess that i'm going to talk about briefly uh was project leonardo revealed new accessibility controller kit for playstation 5 project leonardo is playstation's brand new accessibility controller kit that's currently in development there's no words yet on a release date or price but leonardo aims to remove barriers to gaming and help players with disabilities play more easily more comfortably and for longer periods on PlayStation 5. It was developed with contributions from accessibility experts, community members, and game developers. Now this is a great thing. I think that there is nothing wrong with more people having more access to games and to play games where they wanna play them. I think this is absolutely awesome. And it's really great that they took a page from Xbox and have created a controller to allow people with disabilities experience the stories that are told like god of war and such and such uh because this is just a great thing for gamers so i'm glad that they actually revealed this and i am excited to see uh where this lands and how much money it costs and and uh hopefully this does help with uh some people moving to the playstation platform another thing that i talked about success was something that i think is absolutely stupid and a huge waste of time but they talked about marketing a brand new EV and working with Honda on making this car and play, and placing PlayStation 5s in there so you could play while you sit in your car. And I think that this is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. And it's such a gimmick. And I don't know how many people are gonna wanna invest 30 plus thousand dollars in a car so that way they can play their PlayStation 5 in there. Um, I know I'm not. And I know that a lot of people who are casual gamers aren't. And I know that a lot of people who are even hardcore gamers 
are not really gonna do this either. So I don't really know who the market audience is for this. And I know that a lot of people said that this, that was the same thing they said about phones. Oh, who's the one gonna play a game on their phone? Uh, but the thing about a phone and a car is that, well, phones kind of have um, a place in your pocket and a place on you at all times at this day and age. And phones are actually powerful enough to run a lot of games or to even stream games. So this, is, this isn't really a big, big deal. And I think it's just a waste of time and a waste of money. So thanks, Sony. And the biggest news to come out of uh, not CES, but just news in general is standing the PlayStation 5 vertically could cause permanent damage. A recent report revealed that the PlayStation 5 suffers from an apparent design flaw that can lead to permanent damage when users leave it standing upright. Essentially what's happening here is if you stand your console upright in the upright position, it can cause the liquid metal that's in there, which is the cooling mechanism for the the PlayStation 5 to actually end up leaking. And because it is a liquid metal, it is very conductive and can actually short out your PlayStation 5. Now, I don't really know how often this is going on. I don't know if this is actually happening. I don't really know. I've always set my PlayStation 5 horizontally, but if you do have a vertical PlayStation 5, just go buy a horizontal one and I think you'll be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, just set it horizontally just to make sure. Uh, I don't really care. I, I don't know. It's always been horizontal. I can't fit it standing up. Uh, so that's kind of a huge bummer, but I don't think this is any red ring of death type malfunction. It is a design malfunction. It is poor design. And it's also why a lot of console developers don't use liquid metal because of the potential for that happening. But PlayStation said that they found a workaround and obviously they didn't. So that it concludes the news and updates uh, and the discussions that I wanted to have. So what do you guys think? Do you think that maybe the PlayStation 5 is just going to continue to dominate because of the amount of units sold of the PlayStation 4 and because that it was the market lead that people are just going to continue with the PlayStation 5? Or do you think that Xbox is doing enough and that it's just kind of shit out of luck at this point or do you think that xbox has innovation it has the stability it has the console it has the power it has the infrastructure it's just missing those big big games that everyone is considers a system seller let me know in the comment section below i appreciate you guys for stopping by i appreciate you for uh all the recent subscribers it's really awesome to see this channel grow and thank you guys for growing with me so if you like what you see and you'd like to see more be sure to hit that subscribe button and um i'll be seeing you guys on the next one and remember take it easy